the reading of the Word. For the closing service, the reason I ask you to stand, when they play the Star Spangled Banner, you stand, don't you? Then why not for the Word of God? It's a respect. Now, over in the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse, I wish to read a portion of Scripture, 12th and 13th verse. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite the firstborn in the land of, of Egypt, both man and beast, and will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. My subject is the token. Let us bow our heads now. And in this, the stillness of this sacred moment, before approaching him in prayer, is there a request that you'd like for God to answer this afternoon? Just lift up your hands if you do and think down in your heart what you want him to do anywhere in the building. Just think what you want him to do. Our Heavenly Father, Thou art the unchangeable God, and we pray that you will answer our prayers this afternoon as, as we are holding our hands. And Thou dost notice that my hands are up too. My request, I'll make it known publicly, that is, Lord, that you'll heal every person in here today. Save every lost one. Now, you said if you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Now, Lord, help us together to believe as a unit of people, of believing children. Speak through thy word, Lord. Thy word is truth. Bless our hearts. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for Brother Grant. And for all of his workers and all the churches and the people. And for all that you've done for us, Lord, we're grateful to you. Father, there may be many of us here will never see each other again now. Until we see on the other side. This may be the last service that we'll sit together in this earth. May the Holy Spirit come and bless us together. Minister to us our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I have a little tablet of paper here. I write out some scriptures and little things that used to be I could remember it in my mind. But I just passed 25, you know. That is the second time. And then I'm, I don't remember like I used to. And so many wound up in the meetings and things and so much to do. Our subject this afternoon is the token. Our scene opens in Egypt. <clears throat> it's a great picture here now. I want you all to see it and just be as reverent as you can. Egypt is a place of the scene and the time of the scene is just at the beginning of the Exodus. And now it's a type of uh, today showing as we are also facing another Exodus. God bringing Israel out of Egypt to the promised land was a type of Christ bringing the bride out of the church to the promised land. We are in another exodus. Now, if you'll study the scripture, we just have time to hit the high spots of it. That's true. We are, the as God brought a nation out of a nation, God will bring the bride out of a church. The bride will be called from all the churches. It'll be the elected of God will be brought out. And we're on the verge of that exodus right now. For we have every scriptural proof that we're standing there. Now, I know that's been said a lot of times. Uh, my friend, one time it'll be said for the last time. Time will fade into eternity then. He's coming to take a bride out of a church. The token was the thing that made the difference between Egypt and Israel. The two nations 
They were all human beings, but all God created, all the handiwork of God, but the difference when the death penalty was passed, the difference between life and death was the token. And so will it be at the coming of the Son of God when he brings the bride out of the church, the difference will be the token. I, you listen close this afternoon and see if that isn't true. The token will be the difference. There's got to be a difference. God is going to judge the world someday. If I ask the Catholic people, who will he judge, what will he judge the world by? They'd say the church. What church? The Catholic church. Which Catholic church? There's several of them. The Methodists will say by the Methodist. The Baptist then is out of it. Then if you judge it by the Baptist church, all the rest of them's out. The Pentecost will say by the Pentecost, then the rest of them's out. See, it would be too confusion, too much confusion, too confusing to the mind to think of such a thing. But God had a way here that he said he's going to judge the earth, not by the Catholic church, not by the Protestant church, but he's going to judge the world by Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus is the word. Amen. So there it comes back to the Bible again. See? He'll judge the world by the Bible. And the Bible is God's judgment book, which is the complete revelation of Jesus Christ that nothing else can be added or anything uh, taken from it. The penalty of doing it is your name out of the book of life. Just stay right in the book. And pray God to make us part of that. Now we find out a token. What is a token? A token is a sign of a paid price. The token is. Just like our railroads and bus lines. We take our money and go to a station. Now, see, the bus line is not allowed in the places where tokens are used. They're not allowed to take money. They cannot take money. It takes a token. Say the airplanes, whatever more. You go to a certain place, the purchasing counter, and purchase from your money so many tokens. This certain token. And this token is a sign that your fare has been paid. You have a right aboard the ship, aboard the plane, aboard the bus, or whatever it is, as long as you hold a token to show that your, uh, your ride has been paid for. I remember that, don't forget it, Israel's slaying lamb was the was God's requirement. Jehovah required a slain lamb, an innocent substitute. As we've been through in the week gone by now, that God, when He makes a decision, He never changes it. And He made a way, His first uh, thing that He did when man had fallen, He had to make a way for him back if you ever wanted to redeem him. And He made a decision that He saved man by the blood of an innocent one. And he's forever done the same thing. He's never changed it. No place will God ever meet any worshiper only under the blood. That's his only place. We try to make him meet under our theology, under our denomination, under our educational programs. Some's built towers and some's built cities, Babylon and, and the Tower of Babel and all different kinds of things. But it still remains God only meets the true worshiper under the blood. Praise the Lord. He never changes it. We can't all be Methodists. We can all be Pentecostals. We can't all be this other. We will disagree. But when I come to a man, let him be Catholic, priest, or whatever he is. When he's under that blood, we are brothers. Don't care where he's at, as long as he's under that blood. Now, Israel's a slain lamb was a requirement of Jehovah, and the blood was a token that the job had been done. God required for redemption from Egypt to go to the promised land. He required a slain animal. And that animal must have the blood of the dead animal must be put upon the lintel and on the door. And that stood for the token that the thing that Jehovah had required had been fulfilled. See, now not the lamb was the token. The blood was the token. Now, the life had gone out from the sacrifice, and now the blood was a token. His orders had been carried out. 
The blood stood for the token, the sign that this believer had done exactly what the requirement was. That was a token. All right. Seeing the believer worship was then identified with his sacrifice. See, here's the house. And the worshiper, what was the requirement? Slay a lamb. On the fourteenth day after it's put up, a, a male without blemish, all Israel shall slay it. And the blood shall be taken with hossip and put up on the lintel of the door. And by the way, that hossip was just common weeds. Hossip means your faith. Somebody tries to have supernatural faith. That's the reason you miss your healing. Faith is just a common thing. You got faith to come to church. You got faith to walk out there. You got faith to start your car. You got faith to eat your dinner. That's the way it is. Just common faith. Now, to apply the blood was applied with hussa, which is just common weeds that grows anywhere in Palestine, showing that the faith that the blood is to be applied by is not some super thing. You have to have all kind of doctor's degree to do it. It's just common everyday faith to believe God. Amen. Hmm? Apply the blood by faith with the hussa. Now, the worshiper then seen beneath this blood showed that he had carried out Jehovah's Request and he was a identified, the token showed he was identified with the slain lamb that Jehovah had required. The work was done. What a perfect type today of Christ and the believer. When the token is displayed to the believer, then it shows that it's been accepted and the work has been done. Then the blood was a token of identification, the blood itself, the animal bled, died, and his blood was on the wall. Now, animal life that was in the blood, and life is in the blood, we know that, the Bible said so, and science proves it. Life is in the blood. So therefore, when the animal was killed and the life was broken from the animal, the blood had to be the chemistry of the blood to stand for the token because the life that was in the blood could not come back upon the believer because it was an animal's life. And an animal life and a human life is absolutely different. There's no nothing in it at all. You talk, take an animal's blood and put in it, you'll die. So you see, we, it's, a, it's a different life in the animal blood than there is in the human blood because a human has a soul. The animal has no soul. And now, therefore, the blood itself, understand now, the red chemistry, chemicals of the blood had to stand out on the door as a token that the lamb had died. Now, because the life of the lamb could not come back on the human worshiper, but today it was only a type. Today, it isn't the chemical blood of the Lord Jesus, our lamb, but it's the life that was in the blood, which is the Holy Ghost. It comes back and it's a token that we have accepted and did exactly what God told us to do. And then by having the token, we are identified with our sacrifice perfectly. I don't see how anything more could be any plainer. See, only way anyone could tell that that house belonged to under the blood because the chemistry of the blood was on the doors. They passed through. The death angel had to look and see the blood. Now... Again, it was a type of the Holy Spirit. Now, see, the literal blood of Jesus could not come upon each one of us because he just had so much blood in his body. And it's uh, dripped off out of his body into the ground 2,000 years ago. But it wasn't to be for a token. The life, the life that was in the blood was the token. Now, I'll prove it to you just a minute by the Bible. It is the token that's to come up on each of us to show that we have been identified with our sacrifice and have carried out Jehovah's request. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them as far off as many as the Lord our God shall call. See, not showing it just to them, as many as the Lord will call. There's many think they're called, 
But all the Lord calls, those who he foreknew, he called. All who he called, he justified. All who he justified, he has glorified already. The thing is settled. And then when you take a person that doesn't believe that the Holy Ghost is for the day, see what they're doing? They're denying the token, which is a very symbol of you being connected with your sacrifice. Hmm? See what I mean? It's very simple if you just look at it in, a, in the way that God has got it wrote out. Now, the blood carried us and we were, uh, shows the, the, the symbol of the Holy Spirit that is the life. Now, the animal life could not come back in the human because the, it wouldn't match. The animal life has no soul in it. The human life has a soul. The animal doesn't know he's naked. He doesn't know right from wrong. He, he, just, he has a, a spirit, but not a soul. Now, remember. Now, the soul is the nature of the spirit, of course. Now, watch. But then when the life of our sacrifice, Jesus Christ, when his blood was shed... He was God, bottled up in one man. Now, he come down from being Jehovah to identify himself as a human being, to take upon himself the form of man to identify us with him. He was the Lamb of God, and on the inside of him were the blood. Now, I know... Uh, somebody says he was a Jewish blood. You hear the Jews say that he wasn't Jewish blood and neither was he Gentile blood. He was the blood of God. He had neither Jewish. He wasn't either Jew nor Gentile. He was God. A, a, a virgin shall conceive. Now, I know many of you people in the Protestants think that the egg was Mary's and the, the hemoglobin which comes a life comes in the blood cell. Because a hen can lay an egg without being with the male bird, it won't hatch because it's not fertile. Life comes from the bloodstream, which comes from the male sex. But in this case, there was no male sex. So the life in the blood, it had to come from God alone, and He created a blood cell in the womb of Mary. God Himself, the Creator Himself, created a blood cell. Now, look, they say, well, it was the body. Uh, Mary had the egg. No, sir. She was not no egg. If it was an egg, you cannot get the sperm without a sensation. And if he, she had a sensation, what do you have God doing? He created both egg and blood. That's exactly what he was. We handled God, the Bible said. First Timothy 3, 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. We handled him with our hands. That body was God. It certainly was. He was God all over in a form of a human being. Now, we notice in this that that blood cell being broken, that released God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself where no other one could do it. Nothing else could be done. It taken that holy blood himself. God had to come down and become man to suffer his own law. If Jesus was just a prophet, a man separated from God, then God's unjust. If I could say, let Brother Grant die for some sin that Billy ought to die for or something else, some penalty, that would be unjust. If I had my own boy to die for a penalty that I had pronounced, it still isn't just. There's only one justice I can do. That's take his place. If I want to save him. And God had to become flesh in order to take the sinner's place. God Amen. manifested in the flesh. Nothing less than God himself. Now here he was. Manifested in the flesh to take away the sins of the world. And he identified himself in us that we might be identified in him. See the purpose of it? Now, we find out. Our identification with our sacrifice. The life of the sacrifice in us, which is the Holy Spirit. When that cell was broke, it released God. Released God that He had sanctified a people with His own blood and put God in the man again. 
God in you, eternal life. And any Greek scholar knows that that word eternal life comes from the word zoe, zoe, which means God's own life. That's right. The only way that you ever can have life is only one form of eternal life, and that's God's own life in you. Then you have eternal life because He is the only eternal there is. And we are the attributes of His thoughts before there was even a foundation of the world or anything. All this is just His thinking. And we're the display of His thoughts of what it was. And He had to come down in order to take away sin. No one else could do it. There was no one worthy to do it. No one could do it but Him, and He did it. And then when that life was released from that body, man, which was the Son of God, his creative power, made a building like any contractor built the building that he moved into himself. God did that. And then when that life was taken, the blood, the chemistry of it poured out upon the ground, just like just Abel's poured out upon the ground. But from that blood came the Holy Spirit of God. And that was sent to man on the day of Pentecost to be identified with the sacrifice that died for them. There's no other way in the world we can get it. A positive token. Look, if you were guilty of death and you know you was going to the electric chair, and remember, to reject Dallas, listen, to reject the blood of Jesus Christ, the token of His blood, if you see it and reject it, you're going to face the judgment with His blood on your hands. Amen. Sinner, church member, remember that. What if Lee Oswald would have been able, them few days, and that sweating before that Supreme Court that he had to face and know from killing the president, there wouldn't even be one speck of mercy. How that man must have felt. It must have been a terrific thing. He never got to face it because the other fellow shot him. But think of sitting there before an angry Supreme Court with the blood of your fellow man on your hand, the president of the United States. That'll be a mild thing to you people who pass by the blood of Jesus Christ when you'll stand by the Amen. courts of God. Sweat it out when you know Oswald can go down no more and depart this life for him. But God departs you eternally from his presence. It'll be a terrific thing. Notice, if you had to come to the course of being guilty, you would seek the best lawyer you could find. Anybody would do it. And every man that's born in the world, I don't care how good a home he come out of, he's Guilty of the blood of Jesus Christ until he accepts the pardon of it. And the only way that you know the pardon is right when the token puts itself up on you and you have the token. Notice, you're guilty and you'd hunt the best attorney that you could find to plead your case. And if I was going to the judgment of God, I don't want no priest, I don't want no man, I want the best attorney I can find. To plead my case. Let me say to this, to you, my Christian friend. Our attorney is also our judge. And our, our judge became our attorney. The case is settled. Amen. And we receive his pardon. The judge himself came down and became the attorney. And the attorney and judge is the same person. God become man that he might justify man by his own death that he placed upon him. Hallelujah. That means praise our God. He deserves all praises. Our judge and our attorney is the same person. The Holy Ghost is the token that we have been pardoned. The case is closed. That every man and woman that truly has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost He's been tried. He's identified with his attorney, with his judge, with his sacrifice. And the token he holds in his possession shows that his trip is paid to glory. Amen. Amen. It's all over. He holds that token. It's his. 
The baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a witness of the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. You believe it? Amen. That's your identification. You're holding the token. Now, if you haven't got that token, you'll not be coming in. You must have the token. That's a required prize. When I see the blood, the blood is a token. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. You must have the token. If you don't, why, you won't go. You've got to have the token. If the token was not displayed, the token wasn't showed down there, even the covenant wasn't in effect. You say, now, Brother Branham, now wait just a minute. That's exactly right. The token was above the covenant. For Israel had a covenant to be circumcised. And any Jew could go out and show any person, I can prove to you I am circumcised. I am a Jew. I'm circumcised according to Jehovah's command. But yet, that didn't expel him if the token wasn't there also. Amen. He must display the token. You get it? He, the token's got to be there anyhow. And if you are in the covenant, if any Jew say, I ain't put no blood on my door, I can prove that I'm a covenant Jew. The death angel got him. No matter how loyal he was, how much church member he was, how much tithes he paid, how he said he believed Jehovah, Jehovah required that token. And he does it today too. It's got to be. Must be. Or there's not another way under heaven, not another name given anyway. No matter how good, how loyal, that token's got to be there and displayed. The blood, he say, well, I killed the lamb and I put it in a jar. I set it back here. That's not what he said. It must be on the lintel and on the door place. It's got to be displayed. And your life has got to display the token is in you. Oh, you Pentecostals, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Bobbed hair, painted faces, man, dirty jokes and things. Where's that display? The blood of my Lord Jesus Christ is a token of the Holy Ghost. You having a form of godliness and calling witchcraft and everything else, the works of God are witchcraft? How you display a token? Let's say, I'm penny, I don't care what you are. I'm bad as I'm praying, I don't care what you are. That token's got to be there. God requires it. Amen. Nothing else but that. You say, well, I've got a doctor's, I don't care how many degrees you got. God requires that token and that only. It's a sign that your way is paid. He ain't going to take your credentials for something else. He's got to have that token. The bus driver say, here, wait a minute. That ain't my token. The airplane man say, we go out there now. A ticket is a token. You go out there and tell the pilot, here, I want to get on your plane. How much is it? Go ahead and get your token. Oh, I'll pay you. I can't take it. You won't get on my plane. Until you go pay the price and get the token. I'm looking for the token. Amen. You say, well, I went to school. I've done this. I, did. I don't care what you've done. You've got to have the token or you don't get on. That's right. Amen and amen. 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 Can't you see? God requires that token. When I see the blood and only will I pass over you and I see the token. It was not displayed. The covenant wasn't even in effect. A Jew could absolutely say and prove himself to be a, be a circumcised Jew. You could take the brethren out and say, look here, I'm circumcised. That didn't mean one thing. You say, I'm Methodist, I'm Baptist, I'm Pentecostal, I'm this, I'm that. That don't mean one thing. You've got to have the token. And when the token comes, it testifies of Christ. He said it would. And Christ is the Word. Amen. And how can you deny that the Bible's true part of it and still say you have the token when the token is the testimony of Jesus Christ? There's what I wonder. Oh, say, I don't believe that'll be the days of miracle. Oh, look out, there's no token there. The token punctuates every word with an amen. amen. Everything, because it's God itself. Yeah. All right. But if the token was not there... 
The covenant was not in effect. It was an all. Same now. No matter how, how much you say, how much you say, I believe every word in the Bible. You say, Brother Branham, I, I can quote you half of that Bible, all the Bible by heart. I believe every bit of it. That's good. Satan does too. It takes the token. Well, Brother Branham, I've got my wall full of degrees. I'm a Bachelor of Art, and I have a doctor's degree, and a LLD of Latin, and oh, I've wrote books, I've done this, I've done everything, I've, I've done all these things. I don't care, that's all all right. But yet you've got to have the token. Amen. The token. Still the token is required. He said, I'm a Bible student, I'm a, I'm a good person, I'm this, that. I, that's maybe fine, that's all good. But still it's got to have the token. Now, death was ready to strike Egypt at any time. And so is death ready to strike the nation now at any time. Anna Jean, I feel something like your dad said a remark one time. I've always liked that. He said, you know, this nation with the same sins, if God lets America get by with what she's doing, he'll be morally obligated to raise Sodom and Gomorrah up and apologize to him for burning them. That's right. Remember, Israel paid for every sin she did, and so will we. How loosely are we getting? Tighten up the armor. Come back to God, church. I'm not saying these things to be different. I'm telling you as a warning. You believe. Death was ready to strike. God had showed them His grace and His mercy through powers and signs and wonders. So has He today, before taking the church out. Still they desired not to repent and to believe the message. See, there was a message just before they're taken out of the church. There always has to be. Same now. Every spiritual happening is a sign from God. Do you believe that? Like uh, the message, uh, there's a sign, and then the message follows the sign. God told Moses, said, if they won't believe the voice of the first sign, maybe they'll believe the voice of the second sign. Now, when you see signs going on and no message behind it, this is the same old school of theology and on down, that wasn't from God. But where there's a sign showed, a message follows it. Now, look, Jesus, come on the scene. Am I deafening you or everyone who's on this microphone here? It sounds like it's coming back. Maybe it's a little loud. I want you to get it. When Jesus came on the scene, he never said very much to people. Everybody wanted him in his church. Oh, this young prophet, we're just so happy to have him. He was healing the sick. Oh, glory to God. God's raised up a great man among us. That was fine. So one day, it come to a spot to where that was his sign. Isaiah 35 said it would be a sign. The lame would leap like a heart and so forth. The blind would see. It was a sign. He displayed his sign as Messiah and so forth. And they, many of them said, yes, I could go for that. Well, now, if that was a sign, there's got to be a voice of that sign. Yes. What was the voice behind it? When he began to teach his doctrine and call him a bunch of snakes in the grass, he wasn't pauper from then on. That's right. See, when the voice came with the sign, the sign went first. Moses went down in Egypt with the sign, and he threw down his rod, turned into a serpent. That was sign. But after a while, the voice came with the sign. Then it was different. They don't want that. The, the voice must be follow a sign. And at no other time could it ever come but that time because it was time for the Scriptures to be fulfilled. Look what he told him in the burning bush. I have seen the groans and heard them of my people and seen their afflictions by the taskmasters of Egypt. And I remember my promise that I made Abraham. Four hundred years had expired, and he told Abraham they'd be down there. See, no other time could it be. Moses had to come just at that time. God's big clock ticks perfect. Amen. It won't be one minute faster, one minute behind. It'll be just exactly on the time. Amen. Well, so you see, everything was running just right. Could not come at other times. Neither could these things come at other times. This could not have come in the days of Luther. It could not have come in the days of Wesley. The days of the Baptists or Methodists in their days. It couldn't have come. It has to come now. Israel has to be a nation. The churches has to be like they are now. There had to be a third message, a third church age. There had to be a Lady Osea. 
It could not form until Pentecost come and shot their wad and went out and organized and did what they did. Then it has to come. Then comes the Lord. When they put him out of the church, he is the word. They're afraid to challenge that word anywhere. They keep awful quiet about it, but yet they fuss about it. Chicago, here not long ago when the Lord gave me a vision of, I had 300 ministers down there. I said, now I know what you, about serpent seed and so forth. I said, one of you take your Bible and come stand by my side and disprove it. The quietest bunch you ever heard. I said, then keep off of my back. <laughs> See? It's out of their school of thinking. Yet they say, Brother Bram's a prophet when he was anointed. But when the anointing's off of him, oh, I don't know. What a, if that isn't a mark of a, 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 a mixed up theologian, the very, the word prophet means a divine revelator of the word. Amen. The word of the Lord come to the prophets. That's how Jesus was identified. They said that at the resurrection, they said, we know he was a prophet of God. See, no man could do these things lest God be with them. wouldn't accept his message. They wouldn't accept John, and he was a prophet. wouldn't accept Elijah and all the rest of them. And they had the divine revelation. The word, the English word prophet, English words can mean anything. It means a preacher. But when you say prophet of the old Bible, it meant a seer. And his credentials was that what he told come to pass, and that was a sign that he was a prophet. And he also, that was a sign that he had the divine revelation of the written word. Amen. And then God confirming it behind him, proved it. How well, it just has to be this way. That's all. They know we're getting around it. God said it be that way, and there you are. But there it is today. See, that token's got to be there that identifies that word and makes it exactly true. Then, how he uh, promised for how he prepared all of his promised land people. Now, when he's going to have this exodus, which is a type, now uh, I'm going to try to be out in about another 15, 20 minutes with the message. Notice close. Now, I, I want you to get this because I may never see you again. See? Notice. Now watch how he prepared his people. How many knows that he never changes his ways? He never does. He's, now look through the Bible and see if he ever changes it. No, sir. How did he prepare the people? First, he sent a prophet with a sign, which was Moses. Is that right? And the sign had a message. A message to get ready. They were going out to the land that was promised. Then... He had identification of this prophet that a light was over the top of him. A pillar of fire followed this prophet. We know that went through the wilderness with Moses. We realize that. And then he gave them a token for the assurance that they wouldn't have to be scared, all upset and nervous. He said, when I see that token, I'll pass over you. Watch how he did now. He prepared first a sign, a messenger, identified message, identification of the messenger, and a token for the assurance that the way was paid. They're headed for the promised land. The same thing he's done today. What did he do? He sent us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the messenger. And the scriptural identification of himself identifies him among us the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the token is the assurance. What are we scared about? Our fare is already paid and we are identified with our sacrifice. He can't turn you down. He promised that. We're identified. Israel coming out of Egypt, as I said, is like the, the bride coming out of the church. When Moses began his ministry, Israel all gathered together in Goshen for prayer and worship. Exactly. Come from all parts of the Egypt. That's the way the bride will do. He'll come out of all the oneness, twoness, threeness, and all the other kinds. He'll come out. He's got to. Now we read here in Hebrews. Uh, uh, we, now the first thing we must think of. Come from all parts. Come out from amongst unbelief. Now the Holy Spirit promised to call that in the last days. Come out from among the unbelievers. Notice. We find out in Hebrews 10, 26. I got wrote down here. It says this. If we sin willfully. After we have received the knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. See? If you disbelieve willfully, now if you notice what may I say here, if you spare me a moment, I make that illustration and I could feel the Spirit didn't go over right. See, notice. Here's Hebrews. They're on their road out. God chose 12 men, or Moses did, by the hand of God, to go over and spy out the land and come back. 
bring back a token of the land. And when they got there, ten of them were scared to death. While they said them Amalekites up there, we look like grasshoppers to them. Joshua and Caleb come back bringing the evidence we can do it. You see, that's borderline believers. They come through these different elements and through church and joining church and baptisms and farms. But when it comes right up to crossing over to get the token, the evidence that the land is there, that life, Jesus Christ is not dead. It's another dimension. He lives in it. He's with us. He's now in us. When it comes to that, they, ah, they couldn't believe that. That was too much, you see. And they come back and they, everyone died in the wilderness. Not one of them went over. And see, if we disbelieve, we Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, I hope my old teacher sitting here today, or Dr. Roy E. Davis, many of you know him right here at Fort Worth, is perhaps sitting in here. I remember we discussed these things many, many years ago. He baptized me in the faith, the Missionary Baptist Church. Looking in here now, if we, if, if we come up to that borderland, say, well, glory to God, I spoke in tongues, hallelujah, that's not it. If you can say, that, disbelieve any of that word, there's something wrong with your experience. See? You come right up to the land and see it's there. You see that Jesus has raised. He's among us. You hear the word that follows the message and still don't believe it. You know what happens? Then they die right in the wilderness. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. That's what the book of Hebrews tells us. And I watch as we see the great end time signs in the earth that he promised, how much more it's warning us that the time is at hand. Quit unbelieving. Come together. We should love each other and believe and separate ourselves from the world. Notice, they were not to just come together and talk about the message. They were to get into it. Get under the blood. Not come say, you know... Moses told us, the messenger, he said, he told us that we should have blood. What do you think about it, boys? That wasn't it. Get the lamb killed and get the blood up there. Amen. We can come and sit and agree with the word and everything else, but don't have that token. What good does it do us? No good. Get beneath it. He was not responsible for anyone out from under that blood. And he's not responsible for anybody today out from under the token. The whole family, only safe when they were under the token and the token was displayed, the entire family. You believe that? Today we ought to remember that people, our children and this teenage of nonsense and rock and roll and things that we're going through and all these are beetles and bugs and you know that all is represented here in the book of the Bible? It says that in Revelations. Certainly it does. How people, they, they're, they're, they, they see they, they're not, they're dead. They can't rise. They were never eternal. It wasn't even in the thinking. So they'll perish. They'll be done forever, totally annihilated. They'll be punished for aeons of time for what they've done. But anything that had a beginning has an end. It said it don't have no beginning, has no end. There's only one form of eternal life. Hallelujah. One form of eternal life. We strive for that. Notice, Joshua, the second chapter of Joshua, the believing Gentile harlot had heard and her family and brought them under the scarlet card, which was a token from the messengers of Joshua. God's destroying angel honored that token and that only in that city. There was God's requirement by his servants that God required this token. And that was the only, I don't care if it's the mayor of the town, if it was the holiest man in the town, if they wanted the biggest church in the town, everything in the city fell but that house. God alone honored that token. Notice, Jericho had heard that God was doing great things, but they didn't take heed to the warning. So is the people today hearing what God's been doing for the last few years, but they won't take heed to it. This great power of grace and signs, like he promised as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be. How he promised that thing would be. Watch what taken place in Sodom. Remember, there was the sign of Sodom. But the messenger of Malachi 4 is to get the people's hearts back to the fathers, the Pentecostal fathers, back to the Bible. 
There can't be no more Bible or something else. This is the entire revelation of God. And someone said, well, I believe this part. I don't know about that. The real messenger of God sweeps you back to the entire thing. See? Notice. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Bring you back to every word of God. His grace had been shown. His judgment was next. They must have believed that they were safe in their great big denominational buildings they had in, there in Jericho. But they find out it didn't work. There must have been some of the, maybe got in there, somebody, there's a couple of boys got in there and told to get all that predestinated seed together. And she got, she used her house for a church and received the messengers. And then got all in her city that would believe under the token. One woman. And that whole great economy. One little woman in her real fame, probably excommunicated from every church in the city. But she believed that messenger. Amen. And that messenger left the token aside. And God honored the token. Amen. So is it today. Just remember. When God's wrath destroyer that come, that big system fell, the token kept her house safe. Not because she's a good woman, because she had faith and applied the token. Now while she said, yeah, that was fine, man. I certainly enjoyed the message they gave. But honestly, it sounds kind of silly to have their string hanging out my window. I'll just pull it in. It would have fell. It would have fell. God only honored the token. Same as life token is in Egypt. Joshua was a type of Jesus because Joshua means Jehovah's Savior. He was a type of Jesus, was true to the token sign of his messenger had preached. Joshua stayed true to that token sign. All under it was saved in Egypt. All under it was saved in Jericho. The Lamb's blood is a type today of the token that the Holy Ghost is the token of the day. All under it is safe, all out from under it is not safe. In Hebrews 13, 10 and 20, he's called the everlasting covenant. The old covenant was one thing, this is the new, this is the everlasting covenant. God's blood-bound promises makes us free from sin and shame and different from the rest of the world. You don't have to dress different. Anybody can dress different. You have to be on the inside different. Amen. The life is on the inside, not dressing, wearing. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink or wearing of apparel, but it's uh, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, patience, and the Holy Ghost. Now, the promises makes free from sin shows that God hasn't, hasn't recognized your sin. David said, blessed is the man who God will not impute sin to. And God will never impute sin over that token. Because the token is the paid sign that God has already received it. And you got the token for it. The your faith has bought it. And you have the purchase price of your redemption in your body. To worship Him and show forth His promises and power. The New Testament means new covenant. The blood means life. The New Testament is the Holy Ghost Testament. The Holy Ghost given testimony of what Jesus Christ has raised from the dead. Show Jesus has met every requirement for us and is alive today. The token proves he is alive to identify his self with us according to his promise. Now, how can a man read the Bible? And see that he promised him to see Christ return in these last days in the form of the Holy Ghost and identify himself alive. That's the token. That's the sign. That's the price paid. Don't never rely upon some sensation. I felt chills run over my back and, and I, I smelled something, seen some blood in my hands or some oil or, or I won my bachelor's degree or I danced in the spirit, I shouted, I spoke in tongues. Them things might be all right. I have nothing against them, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the identification of the token Jesus Christ raised and in us now identifying himself to revindicate this promised word of this day. Amen. Amen. Then you and Christ are one. God and Christ are one. That day you'll know what I'm in the Father, Father, me, I and you and you and me. 
There is God made manifest in human flesh, showing himself alive after 2,000 years. That's the token. If you're not in, get in real quick, friends. It might ever last be too late. We don't know. Show forth his presence, the New Testament, the blood. And it is alive now, making vindications. And because he is, we have the right of all he purchased for us. A man that's got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or a woman that's got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, has a right to everything that Jesus purchased for us. For that's the sign that we have. That's the buying power. Say, for instance, you say, well, Brother Branham, what do you mean? Here, make it plain now. I want you sick people to get this. Look, if I was starving to death, and I know a loaf of bread, say, cost a quarter. And along comes a brother and says, here's a quarter, Brother Branham. You're starving. Take this quarter. Now, you know, I can be just as happy with that quarter in my hand as I can with the bread in my hand. Because I've got the purchase price. I've got the token that gets the bread. And right there's the bread. And the only thing if I'm holding the token, the quarter that buys the bread, I can be just as happy with the token as I can with the bread. Now, if you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is the token that you have every redemptive thing that Jesus died for belongs to you. It's in your hand. Are you afraid to claim it? If I put it in my pocket and say, well, I don't know whether I can buy that bread or not, I'll starve to death. But remember, the merchant says, I have one requirement, Mr. Branham. One twenty-five cents. You can have the loaf of bread. I got it. Amen. That settles it. That's the reason we don't see so many things done today. The token isn't displayed. The real token. Oh, we have all kinds of bogus, but I mean a real token. Look, then when we realize and present the token, the life it took for the token, the blood speaks for us. Remember, the covenant blood was recognized with the token, and the word assures us of the promise. The token is the sign that the purchase is made for us. Now, if you're not included in that, of course, you'll never get nothing. You're just walking through a prayer line, walking back out, walking up the altar and looking up, walking back out. But, oh, brother, when that token's once placed in your, your, your heart, and you know it's a resurrection of Jesus Christ in you, something's happening. There is nothing going to turn you. You know where you belong. Full obedience to the whole Word of God entitles you to the token and nothing else. Blessed is he that does all of his commandments and might have right to the tree of life. Then, when we pray, we must have the token to present with our prayers. Now, don't fail to get that. When you pray, you must have the token to hold over your prayer. If you're not, keep praying until the token comes. Because you're not promised to receive it. You've got to have this token first. That's the paying price. Your faith to believe it. Now, sign of full obedience. Fear is gone. Paul tells us that the blood speaks better things. You say the blood speaks. Yeah, the blood speaks. In Genesis 4.10, we find out that God said that at Cain's, uh, Abel's blood spoke out from the earth. We find out in Hebrews 12 that the blood of the covenant of Christ speaks better things than that of Abel. Yeah. Hmm? We find out the blood does speak. It speaks in your behalf. The life that's in you speaks for the shed blood. Hey, Amen. I wish everybody could see that. Think, if you can see what it is. It's the life that's in you. See, that blood is identifying you with it. It's a token. The what is the blood was shed for you. You've accepted the life is coming to you. You have the token. That's the Holy Spirit. Then when we pray, we must have the token to present with our prayers, as I said. And now believe for ourselves and apply the token to the whole family. Like in Egypt, Jericho, or even in Acts sixteen thirty one, we find out that Paul told the Roman centurion, "Say, believe thou, and all thy house shall be saved." Apply it to your family. You got an unsaved child? Lay the token right on top of him. Say, "Lord God, I claim him." Stay right there. You got a mother or loved one that's lost? Lay that token on him. Say, "Lord God, I claim it." 
Move out of all the worldly trash out of your house. Get ready for it. Burn up your shorts. <laughs> Throw your card tables away. Get rid of your cigarettes. Dump your unbelief in your church papers in the trash can where they belong. Amen. Then you're getting ready. Then what do? Then apply the token in prayer with real evidence, real faith. Apply it. Apply it with confidence. When you apply the token, know that you're cleaned up. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have our request. As long as you people are doing them things is wrong, how are you going to ask God to do anything for you? When you know you're wrong. That's the reason we just stagger up and stagger back. I'm not saying this to hurt. I'm saying this to straighten out to get things right. Amen. How are you going to build it up on the chars of a Sodom and Gomorrah? Amen. Come back. Associations and ministers that let the people do anything and get by and just put their name on a book and call them this, that, and the other. When it's a disgrace and it's got so that faith is something's not even, don't even, very seldom they even know what it even is. They've they got a lot of hope but no faith. You've got to get back to everything's combed out and clean. Amen. Then take your token that you know that it's Jesus Christ in you. Then plot. Something don't happen, there's something wrong. Go back again. You got the wrong thing in your hand. He promised it. He was the one who promised it. Apply it. Read Ephesians 2.12 sometime if you, if you wish to. you find out there. Notice in Hebrews 9.11 also, Paul said, serving the living God with living articles. Not saying, just like, I go up like a Hebrew used to, take his sacrifice and come down the road with a big fat bullock and lay his hands up on it and identify himself and shed the blood. And go back justified. Jehovah required it. He did it. Then the next generation, maybe they got a little colder. Somebody else got a little colder. The first thing you know, it become a family tradition. That's what Pentecost has become to us. A family tradition. We get down and say, Oh, wasn't that television show pretty good tonight? <sighs> what what they did down in church? Lord Jesus, he oh mercy. See? It's a family tradition. You know, I spoke in tongues the other day. I belong to this or that, you know. Oh, it's a family tradition. You know what God said? God said, your fats and rams stink in my nose. That's right. Your sacrifices have become a stink. And so as the Pentecostal sacrifices, and all of our denominational cut-ups and carry-on, our women and men doing the way they do, a form of godliness, work the music up, and somebody jump up and down a while, and it's all over like a bucket of water float on if the Word of God happened to come forth and say something. What's the matter? Your sacrifices begin to stink before Jehovah. And it was at that time that the Isaiah come on the scene and told him, I'll give you an everlasting sign a virgin shall conceive. See, there you are. Not dead forms and creeds, no, but a living article, a living God that's raised from the dead and a living among us. Some of them, these churches like that, that believe in these things, they deny that such a thing is a token. A fellow tried to tell me only the twelve apostles received the Holy Ghost. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but we who believe the word know different. We know that this is a living presence for, how do we know it's a living presence of Christ, the Spirit that's among us? It does the same thing He does. That's the evidence of it. A vine is known by the fruit it bears. And then if that first vine come up and they wrote a book of Acts behind it, and the same thing that Jesus done, the apostles done, then when that vine comes up again, it does the same thing. See? Hebrews 13, 8 says he's the same. Oh, my. Proves that God has raised him up for us according to his promised word. A seal of promise. Ephesians 4, 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Ghost of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. Not to the next revival. Until the day of your redemption. Being baptized into it according to 1 Corinthians 12. And in him is the fullness, and no sin is recognized in him. He is born of God, does not commit sin. The seed of God remains in him, and he cannot sin. How can he win the tokens there? The token is a sign he's been accepted. It, well, you say, I sinned. Well, then you never had the token, see? The token is the barrier. shows that the price is paid. If Satan tries to hand it to you, just think of this. 
If Satan tries to hand you some sickness or tries to hand you something, you know what to do? Show him your token. Amen. Sure, sickness strikes the Christian. Show him your token and prove to him that you're a purchased product of God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Hold the token over your unmovable faith in his promised word. God once gave a rainbow sign for a token. I'm closing. Gave a rainbow sign for a token. I've just got about ten minutes and then have a prayer line. He ever remained true to that token, did he? He does yet. All these thousands of years, he has never once, one time failed to display it. He was true to that token. Shows us that he ever and never will fail to honor his tokens. I don't care if it's, if Jesus don't come for 10,000 years, you have a token, he's still got to honor it. No matter how many things changes and whatever more, he's got to honor that token. He said he would. All right. He expects us now to display his token over our God-given faith, the ever-unbelieving cult in the nation and in the world that believes that signs and wonders don't follow the believers and be true to this token and shows that the fare has been paid and we've been accepted for the resurrection Having the token life inside of us. That's a cutting message. But it's the truth. That's what we need. Is truth. God help us to know truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I claim that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. I believe that God gives the Holy Ghost as a token right now just before the exodus of the, of the bride going out of the church. I believe there's so much Tommy Rotten people saying they shouted, they spoke in tongues. I believe in those things, but you can't rely on that. How can you rely on that and then deny the Word? See? The token is the Word. Identified in you, living itself out. That's God being His own interpreter. You don't have to say, well, I, did you interpret my tongue? That ain't it. He interprets your life by the Word. When He takes your Word, what you are, and identifies His Word through there, there don't need any interpretation. It's already there. God does His own interpretation. And we've had these promises for the day. Oh, Dallas, you lovely bunch of Christians. Don't be carried away with this stuff today that you see going around because it's going to perish. Play that token always. Display that token. Read the Bible. Come up to everything. And if your spirit in you don't say amen to that, then you better go back and change that you got for the token. You haven't got it. I know that's a whole lot to be seen here in one afternoon. And it's right now 4.30. It's time now that we can get out by 5 o'clock with the prayer line. Do you believe that Jesus Christ lives and reigns today? Do you believe what I've told you is the truth? It's, it's a token and a requirement. I only can speak what is truth. I only speak what I see, what I hear, what's revealed to me. And when I say this of the tens of thousands times, thousands of times, not one time has it ever failed to be true. Now, that has to be God. That has to be God. Well, would God give a ministry like that to somebody who didn't know what they're talking about? Would he identify himself as that seer there and then turn around and give him a mixed up word? The guy that denies it's one's mixed up. And God ain't mixed up. God's his own interpreter. Receive the token. Don't rest upon joining any church or any farms or anything. Get the token. Hold it. It's the only thing that God will recognize. When you come down to that hour, when it comes to your death, you better hold that token over yourself. Knowing that in the day of his coming, that resurrection, I can present that token. It won't be in this body, it's rottened up. But in this spirit that cannot die, it's eternal life. The token rests there. And he promised I'll raise him up again at the last day. That same Jesus Christ is here. He is the messenger. He is, here is the message. And he is the messenger here to identify his message. I'm not the messenger. He is the messenger. And this is the message. And if you've got a spirit that disagrees with that, how can it be the messenger of the message? Amen. Only the token will identify. Hey, man. I feel religious. <laughs> I really do. I feel like I could fly away right now. For I know who I have believed and I've seen my life identified with him in his resurrection. 
His presence is here. Accept it, friends. Please do. Down in your heart. I know we all come up around the altar and pray. That's an old Methodist idea. They never did do that in the Bible. The Bible said as many as believe was baptized. That's right. No such thing as an altar call in the Bible. That's something we added, which is all right. Anything God blesses, it's all right. Like the anoint cloths. They never such thing as the Bible. They take them from the body of Paul. I think it's just an apron's butt. Any way you want to do it, it's all right. In your seat at the altar, where it is, the only thing, apply that a token to you. Then look yourself over. Look what kind of life, what's going on. See if it's been applied or not. If it hasn't, then lay over what you got aside and come back till the token is applied. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, uh, maybe I, I, I spoke rashly, but Lord, how is a nail going to hold unless you clinch it? I pray, Father, that it will be clinched in the heart of the people, that they will see. That is not no persified thing. It isn't that you're trying to identify some organization, some clan, some cult, some person, or myself, or anybody else. It's Jesus Christ. I'll throw all those organizations together. There's six of one and a half a dozen of the other, according to your word. Oh, mother whore, the Bible of Revelation 17 was the mother of every one of the harlots. And they could not be man, they were harlots. And they all went into the bed of worldliness. And we see it's done at Pentecostals and all. But Jesus, you still remain Jesus. Let them not listen to a message of a church, but the message of Christ, the word. May you identify yourself, Lord, today with believers. Heal all the sick. Forgive our sins, Lord. I, I pray as a servant of yours, please forgive my sins and forgive the sins of this people. I trust, Lord, each one of them has no doubt helped in offerings to pay for the, the buildings and they've spent their money. They they've, they've did everything, Lord. Oh, God, I pray that there won't be one of them miss it, Lord. May everyone, I, I do that with sincerity. Yet, Lord... You must be stern. We know to correct is love. Love is corrective. And I pray, Father, that's the reason that you corrected the, your people. was because you loved them. And every sin has to be answered for. Father, I pray that you will forgive our sins now. As we confess them, we have wandered far away, Lord. I'm identified with these Pentecostal people, Lord. I, I'm one of them. And I, I pray, God, that, that you'll forgive us all and s- take some of these leaders and turn them around and, and let them look towards Calvary there once. And then they'll forget about what they have to be, a presbyter or a bishop or whatever it might be. And know that we're no big ones in this kingdom. We're all children of God. I pray that you'll help us now. Identify yourself among us. Today, we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, just before we start the prayer line, might be somebody here has never been here before. I don't know who you are, but God knows you. If I've told the truth, let God identify it, whether it's the truth or not. That's the proof of it. If he's raised from the dead, he's the same yesterday and forever. He said in John 14, 12, he that believeth. Not he that maketh believe, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. Is that right? Someone said, greater shall you do. That's right. Said, well, we preach the gospel, that's greater. Just do the things he done. That'll prove it to me, you see. Then we talk about the greater. I can show you the greater things he's doing now than he did when he was on earth. And that's not just preaching the gospel either. That's in signs and miracles. Not time for it. Just believe and may the God of heaven who raised up Jesus Christ... From the dead and has presented him here alive to us after 2,000 years. Identify this message that is correct. The token's got to be applied. Now you've got diseases and troubles. Pray. Just sincerely say, Lord, I believe that you're a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And we're told by this minister here that you are with us, present. Then... I want you to be present with us and identify yourself. I pray, every one of you. Now it's up to God to say something. What a time.
Oh, my. I wish you could just know something. How you feel when that comes. The whole world belongs to you. Amen. No devil is going to do nothing. He's a defeated being. My Lord is present. It's all in our hands. Amen. Please be real quiet. Don't walk. Sit still. You in the wheelchairs, don't think you're helpless. Believe you, you, you've went through prayer lines and been failed and failed. It wasn't a minister prayed for you, failed. It's your faith and you begin to think you ain't going to do nothing. You believe. Here. Here's this light. Look here. Over a little colored lady sitting back here. Stand with her hands up like this. Yeah. He was praying. You believe me to be his prophet? Or his servant? I mustn't say that because it stumbles people so much. You have a fine... Here's a white man, colored woman. Just like it was our Lord and the woman at the well. Two different races. He let them know there's no difference in races. Our colors has nothing to do with it. We're all... We could give each other a blood transfusion. No, God made of one blood all nations. You're having headaches. Tremendous headaches. Then you've got a burden on your heart. That's for that child. And you, it's oppressed. Is exactly. Is that true? That's right. This lady sitting over from you there, she seems to be identified with you, which is your mother. That's right. And she's got something wrong with her. Do you believe me, lady? You do? Your trouble is a hurting in your side. That's right. It's your right side that hurts. Is that right? Raise up your hand if that's right. It ain't going to bother you no more. You believe if God can tell me who you are? Miss Lowell. That's correct. All right. Go on your way. The Lord Jesus gives you a request. Right out at the end of there's another little colored lady sitting looking at just just like to tore her to pieces. She's looking right at me. She believes it. I thought you see that thing right there by her. She's suffering with kidney trouble. That's right. It's all over now. He's healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you believe? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe that? Yes. Here's, look at the colored people. Where's your faith at, white folks? Here's a colored lady sitting right here, looking right at me, kind of a large lady. She's got trouble with her knee. Mm-hmm. She's also got uh, trouble. She's got heart trouble. Yes, she's got weakness, flutters, and things like that. Especially when you're trying to lay down, smother. <laughs> that happened last night. Remember. I'm not reading your mind, but I know what you prayed about. <laughs> you want to be called to this today, and he's answered for you. Now, you also can't hardly get up because you've got arthritis. That is right. And then another thing, you've got a stomach trouble, which is a growth inside the stomach. That is true. Now, do you believe me to be his prophet? I'll say it anyhow. Believe me, you'll be made well. What about your stomach trouble? Do you believe that God had healed your stomach trouble sitting there too? You believe it? All right, then you have your healing of your stomach. Amen. You don't quit smoking there, lady? Don't believe God will make you quit smoking? Been trying for a long time. You got stomach trouble also. Been trying to quit cigarettes. That's what's making your stomach trouble. Will you give them up? I resent them from you in the name of Jesus Christ because of your faith to touch him. Hallelujah. I challenge you to believe God. Here's a little woman sitting there praying for her, a loved one, in a hospital dying with cancer. Right? It's an uncle. That's right. You're either a, you're a minister's wife. You believe with all your heart, the man will get well. I challenge you to believe God. What is that? The identification of Jesus Christ. You say, what is Christ? He's the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is sharper than a two-edged sword. A discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can't you see the word has come among us in the last days? 
It's the Holy Spirit taking the Word of God and identifying Jesus Christ, which is the token. Amen. Do you believe? How many of you got prayer cards? Let all on this side's got prayer cards stand up in this line over here. Stand, all on that side, just that side. Stand out here in the aisle. No, just on the right hand aisle, please. Right there. Ushers, get to your place. Then when they get through, let the others all stand up after they come through, then vice versa at the other side. I let everybody be reverent. The Holy Spirit took over the meeting, so. There's enough been said and done to prove. How many believes he's here? How many believes that's a token? How many believes it's a word? Look, how many knows that the book of Hebrews says that the word of God discerns the thoughts that's in the heart? How many knows that? How many knows that that's the reason Jesus could discern the thoughts in their heart because he was the word? How many believes that? How many believes that that's what was with prophets? They were who the word come to. Now, if the word returns to us, won't it do the same? Then how can the word that identifies the word be wrong by the word? Reverend. Hey, this lady sitting here. She's got something on her heart, too. I just happened to turn around and catch it. You Mrs. Green? I never knew that. But you are Mrs. Grant calls to see you with me. You got uh, a nervousness that's bothering you. You got your son's got something other his blood like dripping. <laughs> I challenge you to believe it. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> He's the master of the situation. He's the master of death. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, while your presence is anointing us here in this building, and we are aware this is the Holy Ghost, I pray, Lord, that you'll heal every person that wears these handkerchiefs. One time we're taught in the Bible that your people right in the line of duty was crossing the Red Sea, and the sea got in their way on their road to the Promised Land. God looked down through that pillar of fire with angry eyes, and the sea got scared, moved back, and Israel went on to the Promised Land. Right in the line of duty. Oh, Lord God, let your eyes look to the blood of Jesus Christ down into this token here that we're holding over these handkerchiefs today. And may everybody that wears this, may the sickness get scared. May it move back and let your people cross to the promise of good health. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be so. Amen. How many believing Methodist preachers are here? Baptist preachers, Presbyterian preachers, Baptist preachers, Lutheran or Pentecostals. How many of you believe this to be the truth? Come here and stand by me while we pray for the sick then. Come up here, all you preachers that believe. It's all right. Brother Grant, that's all right. Come down here, brother. Brother Grant's got a ministry of praying for the sick. A gallant man, a good man. A man that God hears and answers prayer for. Brother Grant, I'm happy to put my arm around him today and say that. My brother. Now, he's going to be down here praying with me. When you come through this line, just like you was coming beneath the cross, brother, make a double line right here. Right here. Make a double line. Some up here, some down there. Brother Roy Borders, where are you at? Uh, brother Roy Borders, I thought he was here. <laughs> Looky here at the ministers, would you? Look at there. That makes me feel good, brother. Hallelujah. Ministers of Wonderful. the cross. Man who's standing up here to identify himself with the message. Yes, amen. What can happen? Now look, don't lay it on to the ministers now. They've come to identify themselves. When you pass through here, identify, hold the token before you. Lord Jesus, I've confessed my sins. In return, you have given me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I am a purchased product. Sin, sickness, or nothing can hold me from here on. I'm moving right. Hold that oh, before you pass through here. God will heal you. You go out of here rejoicing, happy, and be well. Do you believe it? Now, each person in here, let's bow our heads, brethren, while together. We don't know what's going to happen. We just don't know. There's not any reason for any sick person to leave this building this afternoon. Hold that token in your heart. Pass right through this prayer line where ministers who's consecrated their lives to 
to the service is going to stand here laying hands upon you as you pass through. He said, what'd you do that for, Brother Branham? I want you, everyone, to know that it just I'm not the healer. This man has just as much right to pray for the sick as anybody else. Frankly, I believe God would answer their prayers for he would mind. I'm tired and wore out and everything. I, I believe they, he'd answer their prayers. And here they stand right in the midst of it to identify themselves. Not ashamed to take their place. Hallelujah. I appreciate man like that. Come on. Now, brethren, I know your feeling. I'm, I'm one with you. I'm the one that's weave my net with you out here in Texas to try to catch every one of them fish that God's ordained to life out there. I'm doing my very best. I'm with you 100%. Sometimes I scold and holler about organization things. That don't mean I'm against you, my brother. I mean I'm against a system that would separate us from being brothers because of some religious doctrine. We are brothers by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We hold the same token. We receive the same blood. So let's believe that. We can meet there, can't we, brethren? Every one of us under the blood. Now, I was ordained a Baptist. Maybe you're a Methodist or Lutheran or Presbyterian. Pentecostal oneness, twoness, threeness, or whatever you have. Church of God. Whatever it is. I don't make any difference. We can't agree upon them little things. Let's forget about it then. Something we can't agree upon that Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for our sins, rose again, and give us the token. We're standing here with our prayers to hold over these sick brothers and sisters that pass through this line. I'm going to believe it with all my heart. I seen something happen right then. Hey, man. I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm feeling good crazy. I just hope I can stay this way. Yes, sir. I just feel wonderful this way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm walking off this platform down here to identify myself with these brothers. I'm identifying myself with them as we all are holding our tokens in our hands and in our hearts. As we obey your command. To lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. May every person passing through here present their token that they have received the Holy Ghost. That they are a born again child of God. That they believe it with all their heart. And as they pass through, may they curse that disease and affliction of their body. And may they go out of here rejoicing knowing that their faith has made them whole. Lord God, as we lay... In the Old Testament, our hands upon the sacrifice to identify ourselves with the sacrifice. We lay our hands upon Jesus and identify ourselves with Him. He laid His hands upon us now in the ministry, identifying Himself with us by signs and wonders. And we are laying our hands upon the sick to identify ourselves with them, with our faith connected with them. Sickness has to go. May it do it in the name of Jesus Christ as we walk down here to receive it. Let all the congregation pray. Roy or somebody come here and stand by this microphone. Keep the line straight. Look, as you pass through here now, come believing. Come praying. We're just going to lay hands on the sick. Come right through. Pray. When you pass through the line of this ministers, if you're walking on crutches, lay them down and walk away. If you've had cancer, sickness, say, the doctor's done all he can do. He's done all he could. He said, I have to die. I'm not going to die. Here's my token, Lord. You promised me a three score and ten. I'm going right through here doing it. See, do that. Will you do it? In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. All right. Only believe. Sing it with me. Only believe. I believe all my doubts are buried in the fire. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Some of them was on those cots and stretchers, got right up and walked away. Just left them laying there and walked away. Oh, it's everyone can be healed now that will believe it. Do you believe it? Let's give us a card, I love him. Will you, sister, the old song, I love him, I love him. Because let's all just raise our voices and our hands, our hearts to God and sing, I love him, I love him because he first loved me. Everybody now. I love him. I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary. A lady up by the wheelchair walking across here with us. Ah, let's wave our hands to God. I love Him.
Let's just praise Him now, everybody. Glory to God. How we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness, your presence. Oh, we thank you for the token, Lord. We are saved and filled with the Spirit, the Holy Ghost surging our bodies now. How we thank you for this, Father. Oh, in Jesus' name we thank you. Amen, amen. Everybody shake hands and say, praise the Lord. Shake one another's hands and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, now all together again. I love you. Hands up, hearts up. I Just express it from your heart. Now let's bow our heads real reverently as a turn of service now to Brother Grant for dismissing, thanking each one of you, first thanking the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and the assurance that I hope that we've left in your heart that we're not here alone. Our great chief captain is among us. The shout of the king is in the camp. And we thank the Lord to see his great power and his great mercy. And now let us bow our heads reverently, Brother Grant.